Welcome to another episode of Talking Awe, a new episode this week. I wasn't here last week. I had uh, work on Saturday, went over to the coast uh, to shoot pictures on Sunday. You know, sometimes you just can't get to the things you want to get to. Uh, there's some sad news today. Being as how this is a new week. Last week, saw the end of one of the first shows on Cheshire TV. Free Minds TV. Toby Islin and Nick Michael Evitz have called it quits. Now, Toby had been part of Cheshire TV from the beginning. He was one of the first shows that back in the day, we were on 21 times a week, three times a day, because there was only like four shows or five shows that were being made here. So, uh, Toby and Nick, we're going to miss you around here. Uh, they used to come in and film on Monday nights and, uh, you know, again, it's one of those things, Toby's, uh, in school, Nick's got other pressing things. Toby got married during the run of the show. They did 250 episodes, which is fantastic because the majority of public access shows don't last more than a year. People do them for a while. Other things come up in life. And the, the first thing that goes away is, you know, the stuff that you were doing on public access TV. Uh, because it is a lot of work to get a show ready every week. Well, not for me, because I just come in and sit down and talk without any real clue of what I'm going to talk about. Matter of fact, this morning I just sat here for like 15 minutes trying to figure out what can I talk about. There's not a whole lot going on that I really want to delve into. Um, so there are a few things, uh, and I've got to say Wednesday night, this past Wednesday night, when, uh, when I filmed Keen No Spin with Randy and Dave, Randy was telling me, uh, that he had had a couple that were in buying a car from him and they said, where do we recognize you from? Oh, the TV. Uh, and I guess they started talking about Cheshire TV a little bit and they said that they loved no spin, but the other show that they really loved on this show, on this channel, is me talking off. The woman says, "My husband and I sit there and laugh." Sorry to disappoint you, folks. I'm going to start off a little on the serious side this week because it seems that this city has taken a violent turn since the new mayor took office. Hey, don't blame me. There was a, a shooting. Police involved shooting last uh, last week. Started as a burglary. Apparently, three men or two men were on the roof of diversified computers, cutting through the roof. Now, what I heard was these must have been experienced criminals because they were up cutting through the roof. Well, the first thing that went through my mind is, well, other than the fact that uh, it had come out that all three of these alleged perpetrators were from Massachusetts. So when somebody said they must have been experienced criminals because they were cutting through the roof, first thing that went to my mind was maybe they were Massachusetts firefighters. See where I'm going with this? There aren't a lot of criminals who will take the time and energy and effort to saw through a roof. 
But you know who does cut through roofs a lot? Firefighters. I know it's taking two things that are completely far apart and bringing them together. But sometimes that's what I do. So anyway, apparently the where these, where these criminals weren't smart is they didn't look in the windows or anything to see if anybody was in the business. And it just so happened there was, and that person heard a sound on the roof, and knowing that it's April and not Christmas time, figured there must be something going on. So he called the cops. The cops showed up. The two guys were still on the roof. The getaway driver who was in the car, I guess, at the time, he took off, led the police on a high-speed chase from West Street to Marlboro Street because apparently this guy knew where the police station was and he wanted to be closer. So the chase ended up, from what I understand, and this is where the, the, the news story lost me that I read in the Sentinel because it said they chased the guy to... Marlboro and Prospect Street, at which time he pulled the bail out of the car routine and led police on what the Sentinel described as a short foot chase, at which time he got back in the car. That's where I'm confused. Because what I can picture is him getting out of the car, the cops getting out of their car, running up to him, him running around the car a couple times, and then jumping back in. Because it seems to me that if a criminal jumps out of a car and starts to lead police on a foot chase, It doesn't seem like the cops would leave the perpetrator's car unguarded, if you will. Seems like somebody would at least be there looking at the car. But I don't know. Apparently this guy jumped back in the car. At which time, police opened fire. I wasn't there. I don't know if they yelled stop. I don't know if they yelled show me your hands. I don't know if the guy had a gun and was trying the, you know, suicide by cop thing. I wasn't there. I was home sleeping. Well, maybe not sleeping, but it was like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So I was home. Regardless of whether these cops said anything before they opened fire. It's basically implied that the cops want you to stop when they chase you across town with full lights and sirens. And then when they chase you after you get out of your car. So this guy should have stopped. I'm in full support of what the cops did. They shot and killed him. I'm not saying cops should go around shooting people, but apparently this was a bad man. And I don't think we should give the cops any grief about what they did. Although I'm going to. Because in my mind, they should have shot all three of them. Because right now, there are two guys sitting in the Cheshire County House of Correction on our dime. Yeah. And once they get convicted, then they'll live for the next 15 to 20 or 5 to 7 or, or whatever the hell the judge gives them. They'll live those years on us. Like I said two weeks ago, with free health care, three squares a day, a bed, roof over their head, and cable TV. A lot of working folks out there can't afford to pay rent and have cable TV. 
So Chief Miola, tell you guys, next time, couple more bullets, no problem. Hell, as a taxpayer, I say, if a cop needs to shoot somebody, I'll reimburse them for the money, the, the cost of the bullet. It can't be that much. Send the message. Maybe, maybe this message isn't enough. We need to stand up and say, we, the citizens of Keene, New Hampshire, refuse to let people from away come here and commit crimes. And I don't care if they're just random people that come in like these three guys did, or if they're people that somebody went out with a bus and picked up to bring them in because we've got such a great shelter. Got to stop. We have to make it known that we will not stand for violence. We will not stand for crime. Plain and simple. Let's go over to the other side of the state now. Where last week uh, a police officer was killed. Michael Maloney, chief of the Greenland Police Department. People say, days away from retiring. You know, if you are, if you can say, I'm days away from retiring, guess what? You're already retired. Stop playing. Because when you're days away from retirement, you've already got somebody trained to do your job. Somebody's already been picked for your replacement for the most part. Um, and you know, but this was a dedicated police officer, dedicated leader, um, and you know, Dave and Randy said it on no spin. Anytime that a law enforcement officer is shot or injured on the job, there were mistakes made. Same thing with fire, the fire department. Anytime that a firefighter is injured or killed in a line of duty, mistakes were made. It's, it's just the way it is. Especially in, in departments like that. Fire departments, police departments, they're trained for the very worst. But things happen. And the smallest mistake can mean the difference, especially in those high-risk jobs. For any of you folks that were home yesterday afternoon while I was here in the studio filming this, watching the NASCAR race, you know. Anytime there's a crash, there was a mistake that happened. Whether it was, it was a, a, an equipment failure which is a, a mechanical mistake, uh, or if it was driver error, which was human mistake. Mistakes happen, that's when the, the shit hits the fan. So, um, here are some of, the, some of the crazy things that I've heard about that whole deal in Greenland. They were serving a warrant on an alleged drug dealer Somebody who they say was dealing 500 oxycodone pills a week. That's huge. They served the warrant. It was a no-knock warrant. They served the warrant in the middle of the afternoon or dinner time. Right? That could have been a mistake. Here's what I heard. Somebody told me, well, they didn't think he had a gun because he's a felon. What? Let me tell you something about, about criminals. Criminals don't care if the law says they can't have a gun. 
That's why they're criminals. Because they don't care about the laws. Only law-abiding citizens. Follow the laws. You know, I used to lead a life of crime. I'm a convicted felon for some theft stuff that happened. I know a lot of you that watch the show probably know. And it, it bugs me that I can't own a gun. Because I'd love to hunt and target practice. But because I'm a felon and I am a law-abiding person, I don't own... I don't own a gun. Plus, in fact, I drop shit all the time, and who knows what could happen with a gun. Um, but a felon who is still a criminal, why wouldn't he have a gun? He's a criminal. So that was the other thing. Now, somebody said to me, uh, A bear cat would have helped in that situation. Again, no. It would not have helped. It would not have protected anybody. This criminal didn't gun down these cops on the road or as they were driving up to the place. He gunned them down as they came through the door. Critical time in the mission for the cops. I mean, it's not like TV, but TV gives you an idea. Cops are, cops go through a door in a very certain, specified, practiced way. But when you bust the door, the first two guys go charging in and get blasted. How would the Bearcat have helped you? The only way a Bearcat would have helped would have been if they drove the Bearcat into the guy's living room, screamed out from inside it, hey, put the gun down and get in here with us. That's not the way things work. So, anyway, enough about that. It's a very sad thing. Uh, uh, I want to say, I think I heard 5,000 police officers from around the state and around the country showed up for Chief Maloney's funeral, which got me to wonder, you know, maybe that was when crimes should be committed in these other towns, when all the cops were at a cop's funeral. Um, uh, with half the country unprotected. So enough about that. Um, let's talk about Earth Day. Because Earth Day was Saturday. Uh, and they had the big uh, Green Up Keen Day. Where, uh, you know, you could go and you, you pick up the little special blue bags that you could take out and, and you pick up trash along the highways or along the streets and the roads and in the parks and stuff, and then you leave the blue bags on a road. Well, you know, that shouldn't happen just one time a year. You know, maybe if those blue bags were available somewhere, I don't know, public works or city hall or something, and, and you could just, you know, pick up some blue bags and keep them so that when you're out on your walks, you could, you could, Fill a blue bag every day and then just leave it on the road and public works would come and pick it up. You know, you could maybe call them and say, hey, I left this on the road in this spot. Or maybe you wouldn't even have to call them. Maybe just any time the public works saw one of those special blue bags, they just stop and pick it up. Because you can't clean the entire city in just one, one morning. No matter how many people help. So... It's something that has to go on constantly. 
I was just from being a, a, a hiker and a backpacker from way back, I was, you know, it was instilled in us that you bring out what you bring in. You know, you don't leave trash. Uh, when you leave a wilderness area or, or an outdoor area, it should look like you were never even there. So um, I think that's important. And now, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Just, take, you know, take care of the planet. And, and you know, you people in the city, if you're watching, maybe you could, uh, you know, take that idea to heart. You know, maybe have those blue bags available all the time. So, you know, if anybody goes, oh, yeah, I'm going to take a walk up in Robin Hood, I figured maybe I'd pick up some trash. Uh, that you could do that. You know, I don't think it would really cost the city hardly any money at all. I like six minutes left. So I want to talk. We've had some deaths. I'll say it. Um, you know, sad times. Dick Clark died. LaVon Helm died. For any of you folks that don't know LaVon Helm, he was in the the group, the band. Uh, and if you don't know Dick Clark, well, turn off the TV and go back to wherever you've been for the past 50 years. Uh, sad deaths. One of the saddest that I heard it happened on April 13th was the fact that Jonathan Frid died. And I bring this up because I'm, I'm going to start getting real nasty. And I've heard that uh, Johnny Depp is over in Peterborough or, or Antrim or Hillsborough at some friggin' artsy fartsy artist colony thing doing something over there. So it's very possible that he just may see this show while he's in the area. And if, you know, if any of you know what's going on with him, Maybe you want to tell him to watch this show uh, or watch it when it's on YouTube because th this message goes directly to Johnny Depp. And, you know, I wasn't thrilled when I heard the news before I heard that Jonathan Frid had died. And now the news that Johnny Depp is remaking Dark Shadows into a movie just makes me want to puke. I'm sorry, Johnny. I used to like you. I loved it the way you turned uh, Keith Moon into into a pirate. It was amazing. Um, well, not Keith Moon. I'm sorry, Keith Richards. Almost the same difference. Um, when I saw the ads for the movie. Johnny, you can't take every role and turn him into Keith Richards. And once again, it looks like that's what you've done. You've taken Barnabas Collins and turned him into Keith Richards. Or Jack Sparrow. I grew up with, with Dark Shadows. And not only did I grow up with it, but I was back for, for its uh, semi-revival when it came out on videotape, and I watched every episode. You know, Barnabas Collins and Quentin Collins and a whole Collins clan up there being vampires and werewolves and witches and, and demons. and I mean, this was not just a... a it was a soap opera. When you talk about Dark Shadows, you just can't think it, it was just a TV show. Because it wasn't just a TV show. It was actually a soap opera. That was the way it was designed. With every, At the end of every episode, there was basically a cliffhanger. And you had to come back next week and see how it goes. And the character development that went on. And then, and then it, it took that turn and it got all weird and it went like back in time and half the show was was back in like the 1600s in Salem, Massachusetts and it was all during the witch trials and 
a little over the top. But it expanded the soap opera uh, fan base so that it wasn't just women during the day watching soap operas. All of a sudden, you had this whole new group of people that were tuning in every single week and digging on the whole soap opera thing, you know? But it was cool because it was a horror soap opera. You know, it was about vampires and werewolves and witches. So it was cool. But Johnny Depp, you're just a dick. Stop it. I hope this movie fails miserably and you never get another acting job in your life. You've worn out the whole I'm a flamboyant rock star pirate friggin' thing. And at this point, I don't care. You're gonna hack up the, the, the memory of Dark Shadows and then go on your merry little way and it's wrong. It's just wrong. Why doesn't somebody come up with some new ideas for movies instead of just taking old stuff and remaking it? That's all. Actually, you know, maybe somebody should remake 2001 A Space Odyssey. That would be worth remaking. Yeah. Anyway, I'm out of time for this week. So, you know, let me run the email address real quick. If it comes up. Oh, and it didn't come up. All right. So we'll go right into the credits then. Sorry. Till next week, Rick Blood. Take care of each other. Peace.